What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War cast from the ladder. This time it's going to be Sock here in the top left hand corner. Jadong in the top right. We uh, watched these two play. I remember a fantastic game between the two of them back in February. I put a cast up on the channel. You guys should definitely check it out. Maybe I'll put a link or a little box here for those of you who missed it. A really great Blitz Y game uh, with Jadon going into Hydralis Defiler and pulling out some moves uh, that really reminded me of the Jadon from back in the day, but that's neither here nor there. Today, we're gonna be going into a six game series, guys. And this video is sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. I really appreciate all of you guys who clicked the link in the description and checked out that RTS game, that indie game that sponsored us recently, that's been helping us to continue to keep this Brood War dream alive. So shout out to all you guys who clicked the link, who tried out the game. Uh, we're gonna be playing it on stream again this week and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys there. I, I did, did start to stream again this week. Took a little bit of a break from Brood War after going to the ASL. Just a few casts here and there. Still keeping up with the KCM and all that, but... I uh, did take a little bit of a break. Now we're in the Nom Star League. We just signed up for the Nom Star League, so we have to start practicing again. So that means we have to watch very carefully some Zerg play, especially in this matchup. It's my worst. ZVT is insanely hard. So we're going to be paying, paying close attention here to some Zerg players to learn some strategies and especially learn how to counteract this play right here. Eight racks is coming from Sock. And I tell you, I played a bunch of ladder games today and I got eight racks, I think, every single Terran game I had. Um, I don't remember even one game versus Terran where there wasn't an eight rack. So... It's really popular. I thought it might be going away soon, but it's just becoming more and more uh, popular on the ladder. So, Sock gonna open with this. He opened with this in the game on Blitz Y as well, but this time he hasn't taken as much uh, damage on his SCV at the front. You really wanna get some damage on that SCV to start things off. Really important. He's not gonna get that damage, but oh, he loses one drone. Okay, that drone was supposed to be pulled back. Another drone gonna go down. A third drone about to fall. He does get on top of the Marines. Another drone goes down. Four drones have fallen. A fifth drone falls as well. And with fifth, five, six, oh, six drones. Dude, that SCV micro though. Holy cow, that was crazy. Sock getting so much damage out of this 8-Rex. Guys, we watched that last game from just a couple of months ago, Jadon was able to shut down the eight racks like nobody's business, but this time, really struggling. Well, it is retro, I suppose. Retro, very fast rush distance here on this map. Killing off the Marine there at the front, trading out just one Ling for the one Marine, definitely worth. But he is severely hurt right now. Jadong does not have an overlord either. So he's got to save up money to build an overlord. So then he can start building drones again. This is this is rough right here. You generally want to build your overlord on 16 because you will gather larva. You will have floating larva here. I wonder if you will just pull the trigger on like a ling attack or something. He's not getting ling speed, so I guess that's not the case. It's really tempting though. It's very, very tempting. When you lose this much to the early game, uh, eight racks, it's so tempting to just build a ton of links and try to kill your opponent. But he's going for drones. Gotta respect it. Full on drone production here. Now he could end up taking a lot of damage from this few Marines that are being sent out here. He only has three Lings and there's four Marines. The fifth one on the way. 
Uh, if he loses a Ling right off the bat, it'll be very tempting for Sock to push. Okay, he's not going to go for it. I can't believe he's able to afford this hatchery. That is insane to me. Able to get that third hatch, and he's got the Spire on the way. After losing six drones and being forced to make extra Lings here, somehow Jadong is going to be able to bring this into a, a kind of a normal-ish game. That is just impressive all on its own, honestly. Got to give it up to this guy, Jadong. He's not the top of the pack anymore, but still an excellent person to watch. If you're trying to learn Zerg. Makes a lot of good decisions. Really solid Zerg play overall. Maybe not, you know, the soul key level or anything like that, but... Still incredible to watch. Very nostalgic as well to see Jadong still playing in 2024. It's a blessing. If only we could get flashback, boys. If only, if only we could get a flash Jadong series on this channel. That would be so hype. Remedic. Cleaning up the map right now. Sweeping away all of the debris here. The Lings. Like you said, the Overlords are in the gutters here. Pretty good overall map coverage. In terms of the vision here from Jadong. Two racks. Oh, three racks factory here. Will be the follow up from Sock. And just a few turrets so far and you can see he's finishing up the turrets in the main and natural or main and uh over the barracks here a little bit later that's pretty standard stuff because the natural is closer to your opponent you want to start these turrets earlier they need to finish first and now with three turrets here it's gonna be a little bit hard to abuse this position and i'm still gonna go for it though now he can't really see the turret, unfortunately. It's a pretty good move to bring the factory over that. Makes it pretty hard to target that down. Does also make it difficult to repair, but if he's already got the SCVs repairing, then I guess it doesn't matter. Still with seven mutas here. I'm gonna fly all the way into the main. Why a few SCVs have been taken out at this point. The mutas are gonna be able to back away with still seven left over. Not bad at all, Jadong. Dealing a fair amount of damage there. I would say, what was that? Five, six SCVs total. He didn't really deal do too many SCV kills here in the natural. He's mostly targeting down turrets, which is unfortunate. If you're just going to fly over, it's much better to just fly through and pick off a few SCVs and then move to the main and pick off F SCVs as you fly through. Killing off a turret is much more of a I want to stay and play type of a move there so he's gonna come through flying in here abusing the fact that it's difficult to get marines around this oh boy marines coming up to it channel in those mutilists and catching the mutilists here really nice control from sock good preemptive movement he's sending marines over here as the mutas are coming in and he's sending Marines this way at the same time. Realizing that if the Mutalists uh, fly through, they're going to end up getting caught in this area. Really well played by him, but a Valkyrie out on the field now. Can Sock break anything before we have Lurkers uh, ready and waiting? Four Lurkers are going to head out. I don't think that he saw those hydras i'm not 100 percent sure the hydras are actually going to head to the north and probably morph up here on the high ground and try to counter attack because i don't think that he can hold this base the hatchery is not even done and he cancels it so hatchery doesn't finish ling speed is about to finish here drone on the map trying to set uh be sent down to bottom left that's not really going to work out either. So he doesn't have a drone on the map right now. He's going to send out another one. It could also get caught here if he's unlucky. 
And I think he might be unlucky here. He really wants to... He, he needs another base somewhere. Um, getting one maybe down in bottom left might do. But look at this. The stim. He's going to try and target down that drone, it looks like. No, not able to target that down. But, oh! He gets on top of the bunkers, and the Marines were not inside. The lurkers here... Able to get the kills on both those bunkers right away. Now the Mutas are taking a lot of damage here from these uh, Valkyries, unfortunately. And the Lurkers are not close enough to the ramp to actually control that. So this is not really going to work out too well for Jadon. I mean, it was a good idea. And a nice counterattack, but it gets shut down pretty darn hard there. Now more Lurkers, more Lings are going to try and run up here. Lurkers get the pretty good surround. Uh, Lynx as well. One Lurker did get targeted down there pretty nicely by Sock, but he's only on three Marines. Three Marines remain here, and the Lurkers are going to get pretty near to the ramp right now. He can't shoot down onto the Lurkers. Uh, and the Lurkers can hit everything that comes down this ramp. So this is a pretty bad position for Sock. I guess they can't hit the Marines when they're right there. But he's going to start to lose some of these supply depots. Do we have Hive? We do. And Consume just started. So he might just barely... Oh, he's going to get the vessel. Nicely done. Targeting the vessel is definitely the right choice at this point. Send two more Scourge out. We'll get the Valkyrie as well. Really great presence of mind from Jadong right now to be building Scourge during all this madness. Sending them across the map. He's got everything rallied, I think, to right here. And he's going to try and kill the CC. The CC should be able to retreat on the high ground. Now, this looks really, really bad for Sock, And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is pretty scary. But there are still ways that you could bring this back. He's going to start the factory. He's going to get a machine shop. He needs to break this ramp before consume is done. And the defiler is here in the natural. Where is that defiler? This is the ticking time bomb right here. Just squiggling its way across the map. Look at that tail. What a freaky unit. This is like uh, something that you see skittering across your... Across the floor of your room. Uh, when you're trying to play a ladder game. And you just see it out of the corner of your eye. There's nothing you can do about it. Went somewhere underneath the fridge. All right. It's done. Dark Swarm. And we should see a tap out here. Nothing that Sock can do at this point. There you go. He hops inside the bunker with some fire bats. But the Lurkers are going to get under this Dark Swarm. Another Dark Swarm is going to come up. He can just move this Lurker. He doesn't move this Lurker. It'll be pretty hilarious. But okay, he does move it. The dropship here. I guess there was a plan to maybe get out on the map. Try to cut, shut down a base. But... There's already multiple bases up right now for Jadong. He's just going to be getting more and more ahead right now while ending this game here um, by just sending constant stream of slow defilers sliding their way across this map, wiggling forward here and snuffing out any hope Sock had in this game. I'm really surprised he's still in here. This is a real fantasy timing. We've still got six more games to go, so... Let's, uh, let's let's pick up the pace here, Sock. What are we doing right now? We're going to build a, a, another barracks. Is that what we need? Um, nice uh, dodging there with the science vessel, of course. He's just going to get over here with the dropship, I guess. Dropship and some marines are going to get over to this base. And the lurkers are not burrowed. So that's not good. We do want to have those burrowed. Looks like he will kill all the marines, though. The marines go down. Um, Marines over here are being pushed back. I think we lost that vessel. And the drop is dealing some damage, but there's another gas over here. We're not dealing that critical damage, and actual barracks are being killed at this point. So, this is, um, kind of a nice idea from Sock to try and bring himself back. I appreciate the hardiness of Sock here. His unwillingness to give up, but there it is. Game number one is finished. We're going to jump on to game number two. This video has been sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. It's an indie RTS that's being developed by a fan of Brood War.
This is an early access free to play game, so it's not quite a finished product yet, but the developers are hoping for more RTS players to join the group. But the basic parameters have already been set. There's three races, Neon, Marble, and Rust, which you control, gather resources, make armies, pretty similar to StarCraft, but more of a cyberpunk, maybe Tron type feel. In the coming weeks, we're going to be trying out the game, playing a bit of it on stream as well. There's a link in the description down below where you can get the game on Steam. The creators of the game are very passionate and they want to create the best possible RTS. So they'd love to have some more seasoned RTS players try the game out, give them some feedback. I'd really appreciate it as well. Go down into the description. Again, click my link. Every one of you who downloads the game supports me directly. So I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you to Neon Marble Rust for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the action. Okay, game number two here with Sock in the top right hand corner, Jadong in the bottom right, and you gotta fear those defilers, man. The underneath the fridge there. Those little wiggly boys. They are scary. Especially for me. I sleep on the floor. I'm living in Japan right now. We sleep on the floor. It is what it is. If there's a bug in the house, I do not sleep until that boy is dead. It's an absolute necessity. But uh, luckily for me, I live in a pretty new apartment, so there's really not too many of them. Um, still, there are flying cockroaches in Japan, guys. I remember my very first apartment. Um, when I first moved to Japan, I got a job uh, teaching English. And I moved to Japan, and my boss hooked me up with an apartment he said was going to be great. Uh, it was a friend of his, a very old man, who was willing to rent to me, and uh, it was not great. <laughs> it was not great, guys. It was a very old place with uh, cockroaches all over, and uh, it turns out a lot of dust mites as well, which gave me pretty horrible al allergies, but I just remember uh, sleeping on my futon at night and hearing something in the middle of the night and, like, sitting up. And then getting hit in the face by a flying cockroach in the dark. That shit is... That's the nightmare fuel. <laughs> that is nightmare fuel, my guys. Um, yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> that's not one of my favorite memories, but... You know, you gotta... You gotta put yourself out there. You gotta live a little bit. I'm sure that... Um, Other people have way worse living situations than I did at that time. So I just kind of rolled with it. Eventually, I did get into a, a nicer, newer place. And it was actually cheaper, hilariously enough. So thanks, boss. Well done. I was able to get my own place. Not even through a friend that was cheaper. Anyway, we've got another 12 hatch. So I've got plenty of time to tell you guys some more stories and uh, talk some more crap but I will mention just a single racks expand here no early pressure aside from this one marine that's going to be pushing up and Jadon should be able to handle that no problem ooh but wait a second okay no he's got the moving shot yeah with the moving shot there there's not really too much he can do Oh, can he kill a drone? Mm, not quite. Not quite. That's good. Jadon, holding that off. Two lings out. Perfect. Perfect. Just needs the Overlord, and that is that. He is good to go. This is something I struggle with, actually, is... And the reason why I mentioned the Overlord is that whenever there's this early Terran pressure, the early Marine pressure, it is super easy to forget your first... Or the Overlord on 18 and get supply blocked at 18. It's so bad if you, you end up uh, missing that Overlord, but if you handle it like this, like what Jadong's doing right now, with just four links, oh, he's building three more pairs. He's gonna go hard here. Oh, dude. Sock could be in a lot of trouble. He's losing so many Marines, and there is a big clutch of Marines, or links coming behind this. I think he'll have to lift. 
I think you'll have to lift and and block this better. I don't know. Oh god. He's just gonna block with an SCV. Um I think he could have lifted and made this a perfectly tight wall. But I'm not 100 percent on that. Okay, sees the links now, and yeah, he hasn't blocked this. Dude, Jadon gonna take this game, man. Look at that. Getting in there on top of the SCVs. He gets the quick win. Sock. Losing out to the Ling attack here. Really nice stuff from Jadong. Recognizing that Sock was just being a little bit too aggressive with the early Marines. You know, he got the early damage last game. He got some pretty sick early damage. And still didn't win. So I think he just wanted... He's like, I have to get this damage. I really do have to get damage here with the Marines. Otherwise, I don't know if I can, I, I, or I don't think that I can beat this guy. So he, he overextends with the Marines. I hope he'll play a little bit more passive this next game. Like maybe send out a Marine or two. If he eight rexes again, I guess that's fine. But send out a few Marines, come back, hold the wall and go for, you know, your, your standard mid game and show us some crazy sock plays. That's what I'm hoping for for game number three. Moving on into game number three here. Jadong in the bottom left. Sock in the bottom right. Citadel is the map. And Sock just got bopped. In that last game, the Ling attack. Taking him out. It's like a little bit of justice there. When these Terran players are getting their great early advantages with those early barracks plays. Trying to build bunkers behind your mineral patches and being super annoying. Nice to see a Zerg just take it to him. And get an early win. Uh, off of some marine aggression. Love to see it. Now we're going to set up another wall here. This doesn't mean that we're not going to be aggressive with marines. But I hope he's not going to be too aggressive with marines this time. There's a spawning pool on the way here Ooh, this is interesting this is over pool you don't see it very often over pool i'm gonna watch this build very carefully because sometimes i actually make the mistake i think that i'm playing against protoss and i go over pool and then i realize oh shit it's terran and then i feel like i'm just completely uh messed up in terms of my economy Jadong here actually deciding to do this. We'll see how it pays out, how it pans out here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw down the hatchery. And how will he follow this up? Instant gas? I guess. Right? Immediate gas? No. He's gonna go four lings. Okay, and then he's gonna go gas. I thought he might go four lings and then a third base. That's kind of what I was thinking might happen, but I guess not. Going for the gas here. Four lings into a gas. Another drone going to pop. He should have three drones just about done by the time this extractor is finished. So that he can keep nine drones on the mineral patches. Nearly there, nearly there. Let's just see. Yeah, he's at eight drones to the middle patch. Pretty much, pretty much there. One more drone gonna pop out. Like, the, the economy's not that bad with the overpool. It's just, yeah, it, it's it's weird. It's not, it's not a typical play. It's not as good as a 12 hatch, that's for sure. 12 hatch, way, way better economically. And we can't really do anything with these lings. The wall in is just so conventional at this point. Pretty much everybody does it. So he's really not gonna get too much with those four lings, and all he's gonna get is just no pressure from the Marines. That is that is it. And as, as I say it, the Marines start to move out. They're gonna start to put that pressure on. Uh, see if he can force out a few more lings, maybe. If he can do that, things are gonna get really nutty. He sees the four Marines. Links are going to be here on the high ground. Is he going to pull drones to try and fight this? Or what is exactly is he going to do? He's just going to run on top of this. Okay. Takes one shot. But 
uh, yeah, gonna pull the drones. Here we go. So here comes the surround. Oh, good target. Very good target there. Gotta pull these drones away. Ah, crap. You know, this is about as w the worst that could possibly happen. And a bunker's gonna start. Dude, this is about as bad as it could have ever gone. Um, he's gonna try to get back here. See what he can do. I guess he'll get all the Marines. He should be able to. But, uh, this really sucks right now. This is, this is painful, guys. We lost a drone and we had to build so many lings. He's going to send out a drone, I guess, to try and secure upper left, perhaps. But, yeah, you're not feeling good at this point. Oh, the run by, though. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, we're getting some damage here. Those lings are supposed to do nothing. But if the... The Marines let them in if the Terran player lets them in. Hell yeah. Getting some good damage there. It's not the greatest, but hey. Feeling pretty good now. Of course, you know that there's not going to be any five-minute timing, so we could probably skip all Sunkins, which is fantastic. Like, what I was thinking is going to happen is that he had to build all those Lings. He wasn't able to build too many drones. Um, the three Marines are annoying, but he was going to be able to move out with like five Marines, a couple of fire bats and a couple of medics here and threaten the front and maybe even force, you know, two sunkins with that attack. But, uh, with the, the counter attack here, Marines going down, just pure Muta will be out on the field and these two fire bats can't really do much. They can go over here and tickle the hatchery in the top left, but probably the Mutas are going to find them, if not the Overlord here. Uh, maybe, just maybe. Okay, Ling going to come over here. Can he see it? Wow, the fire bats just ninja fire bats over here. Going to make their way over towards the natural. Oh, man. Dude, this is... Actually, this is going to be big. Sock with the ninja fire bats. Going to run into the natural now. He can turn and kill this. I think he should. How many kills can he get? Trying to get some shots off with the drones. This is a lot of lost mining time already. These fire bats are worth their weight in gold right now. Doing so much damage. Okay, one goes down. This guy, how many kills did he get? Two kills total. So, it doesn't look like much. Two kills, eh, whatever. But he forced the Mutalist to go all the way back home. Now he's going to have all his turrets done. And he forced a ton of lost mining time. So, these are really, really big things for Sock right now. These are huge, huge advantages. So, Sock going to be feeling way better. Uh, than he was just even moments ago. Moments before that fire bat attack. Now, this is not uh, a dead Jadon here. He is going to pop out another four mutas. He's going to go up to around that nine count. And with nine mutas, you should be able to stop this army from pushing forward. He actually needs to because there's no sunk in here at all. He kind of had to cut corners somewhere. Another two Marines heading up towards top left. He sees that with the Overlord, but is he paying attention to it? He needs to build some Lings here. He does. So Lings are going to pop out in the top left. Those should clear out those Marines, and he can most likely stop this with his Mutas. It's just all about whether he can, you know, take this. Oh my god, what the heck? Holy crap, that was really weird engagement there. Both players kind of messing that up. I think that was because the, the Marines and Lings were fighting, but <laughs> the Mutas kind of flew in and stopped there. And the uh, Marines didn't really fire either. So that was uh, <laughs> that was a bit strange interaction. But in the end, Jadon clears that out. Another three Marines heading out on the map right now. This is such sneaky play by Sock. He really knows how to get back in the game from a deficit now firebat play was insanely good these three marines could do even more damage though 
by running in here and killing every single drone. We've got Hydralis Den on the way. But he is none the wiser. Okay, he sees it. He sees it. Does he see it, though? He sees it, but does he see it? I don't think he saw it. The Overlord sees it, but Jadong does not. These Marines are going to run in here, start to gun down a huge amount of drones. Four drones are going to fall. He could even gun down the Hydra Den or something. I don't know what he's going to go for. I think the Hydra Den would actually be an insanely good pickup. If you could kill the Hydra Den, I, I guess it's a lot of HP. How much, how much damage do we do to this? Another drone goes down. So he got like 400 damage. Yeah, he probably wouldn't have been able to kill the Hydra Den, I guess. Maybe if he stimmed and just attacked the Hydra Den uh, that whole time, uh, it would have been would have been close. But if you're going to go for Valkyries here, and he is indeed going to go for those Valkyries, if you can delay the Lurkers at all, that Valkyrie play becomes so much stronger. It becomes crazy, crazy strong. Now the Valkyrie, first one going to come out here. It does take some damage from a Mutalist Swipe, but... The mutants take a big bout of splash. And we're about to have two more Valkyries out. As soon as we hit three, these mutants will not have any say in this next fight. Unless we can get some good Scourge hits. That is the one caveat there. If we can get Scourge hits on these Valkyries before the engagement happens, maybe the mutants can do something. But as it stands, mutants here are just going to have to run back. Lurkers are going to be morphed. It is tight right now though <laughs> oh my gosh we're really cutting it close here scourge are not going to connect the marines are going to start to push forward here even further making their way right up here into the natural we've got one sunken colony done but so many marines here are available and the valkyries are just going to shove these mutilists back there's the lurkers popping out Good spread and the split here from the Marines and GG is called. Sock firing back here with a good solid play. I mean, he's still pretty cheeky though with the fire bat run by. He throws down the scan just checking to see what Jadong had but he managed to get in there right before the Lurker upgrade finished. It's exactly what you want to do with the t this type of Valkyrie timing. Perfectly, perfectly done here. Kind of a wacky, messy game, though. Not, you know, just straight up standard uh, Terran versus Zerg by any stretch. This is uh, a pretty messy game on both sides. Both players making a lot of mistakes here. So let's see if either player can clean up their act. Try to pull out a better game here. Sometimes that's Bird War for you. It's just who can make the least mistakes. And in this case... Sock made the least mistakes. He pulled some dirty tricks with the fire bats, and he gets a win here. Game number three. Okay, well, I forgot to click the record button. <laughs> that doesn't happen for a while. We casted the game and then realized that it wasn't recording, so now we're gonna have to do it again. Yippee. We've got Jadong here in the bottom right versus Sock in the top left. And Dark Origin. Let's see what uh, Jadon can pull out. He just lost that previous game on Citadel. Was well, a bit rough. He went for the nine or the uh, overpool build. Made just a few lings. Tried to play it out normally after overpool. I don't know why you'd ever do that. I think the the better play probably eleven pool. That's like a very, uh, that can lead to some very aggressive builds. You get the 11 pool, you get a very fast gas, and then you can get a super quick layer. You can make a few lings, but you just have a little bit more oomph as well. Here he appears to be going for another overpool, which is a little bit surprising. Eight racks here again from Sox. So this time actually, this play will pay off. It will pay off here. Last game, we didn't see the eight racks and this overpool play. It's just bad against a regular. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just not good against a regular wall in. If they just wall 
Like, for example, this is a funny wall, actually. Most players are doing it now with the wall like this. Uh, barracks here, and then Supply Depot there. And it gives you, like, a little area to micro here as well. It's like you'll go around the Overlord with the Marine. But he sees the timing on the hatchery, so he knows he has to pull back here. Um, like I was going to say, you're going to put... Usually, you're going to put your Supply Depot here. And your barracks there, so you have a little micro area here. And then, uh, once this early game is over, you can float your barracks inside the main base. And then just put one turret here to defend your two supply depots. When they're spread out like this, it's really hard to defend both from mutilous harassment. So, that's, that's kind of the new style. The new understanding of uh, how to wall in here as Terran. Um, looks like Sock going to go for kind of the old way, though. The Mickey Mouse wall in. It was popular for a long time. It's fallen off, but we're still going to be here. An uh, another hatch here. This is actually what I thought Jadon would do last game. Was get the later gas. Go for the nine pool. Or sorry, the, the over pool. And then build some links. He's got six links right now, which is quite a commitment. Six links here. And then hatchery at the third base then the gas and this is really for a hydralis defiler style of of gameplay now surprisingly he's gonna make a few more links here he's threatening the marines and he can see where how many marines are out right now and you know when the uh next marine is gonna pop he's gonna come around with a flank here more links coming up this is not expected from sock sock gonna try and micro this out he's pulling back the marines that are damaged but Dude, this is just way too many links. Not enough DPS. And the wall is open. Sock gonna have to tap out. GG. That's it. Sock is out. What the heck was that game, guys? See, it was a quick one. Not the worst in the world to recast here. I wanted to see Jadong play this. Because this is a cool build. This is actually a fun build. I think this is going to become more and more meta as time goes on on some of these two-player maps. Because 8 racks is so strong, you get the overpool, you make the four links, and then you just get another base. You kind of sense what's happening with the Terran player. You get a sense with the links. You make sure that you don't die to 8 racks. And then you can pull ahead a little bit later by adding on extra sunkins at each of these bases. You will have a later uh, mutilus timing with this build. But if they go 8 racks, they're going to be a little slower as well. If they play like totally normal, you can kind of catch up from doing the overpool by having this third hatch so early. So it's interesting. I want to see more of this play from some of my zergs. Some of my zergy boys here. Maybe some jadong coming up in the the rest of this series let's find out we're gonna jump into our next game here all right sock you're in the red right now his cheeks have got to be red after that last game definitely suits him a little blush on this man for keeping his marines out in the front for way too long letting jadon roll over him with slowlings the slowling death it's a fate that uh, few S-ranked Terran players fall to. But uh, sometimes, man, if you're going to be that aggressive with your early Marines, naked Marines, just like that, can get wiped out by just a few surprising lings. Um, I guess he was expecting that Jadon would be doing the play that he did in the previous game, where you know, he was really hurting for drones badly and trying to you know get his layer out and everything on time and just thought that he could maybe force a little fear out of Jadong with the marines being out in the front and maybe snipe a ling or two something like that but it definitely backfired hard there now we're back on citadel this is the map where sock was able to take a big win in this series now he's going for almost exactly the same play i think this is actually the same build 
the wall in here at the front. This time he's going to be going for that uh, that typical wall in of that second supply depot right here, I think. Get the ling type wall going on at the front. Um, with just a small gap here on the left-hand side. Whereas Jadong, I mean, he's not going to go for the overpool again. This time, good, good old straight up 12 hatch. And we might get to see a great game here, guys. We might get to see a nice long game out of these two. Uh, if nothing crazy happens in the next uh, 10 minutes, if nothing crazy happens in the mid game. Oh, something crazy always happens in the mid game, but if nothing happens before Mita's come out, if we don't see like a sudden bust or something, or another, you know, racks get thrown down here or something, definitely not a good idea. You don't want to be throwing down a racks. You can see this with the uh, overload. So I'm pretty confident we're going to get, <clears throat> we're going to get a good game here. A reasonably long one. Now, spawning pool just about done. First Marine heading across the map. He's going to force just like a couple links. This is really just to force the first drone to just leave. Bunker going to be started here. That I did not expect. Bunker seems a little bit... Uh, yeah, that's ambitious. That is very ambitious. I don't think you're going to be able to um, make that work, but... He's going to get a Marine in there. Second Marine's on the way. Third one, not far behind. Lings are going to be able to come up, though, and run around this. Sniping down the Marine is the right choice. Secondary bunker, not going to be able to hold. This is perfectly done by Jadong. Guys, if you're struggling to handle a place like this, Jadong's showing us the way. I'm going to go ahead and surround this. Now we're going to pick off the SCV. The bunker goes down. And yeah, one... One single link to chase that SCV. The rest are going to go across the map. Force and Mr. Uh, Sock back into his base. Make sure that he's being honest. Spire here going to be coming up. I'm actually really impressed with how Jadon held that. Uh, it's very hard to sometimes block the Marine. Sometimes the Marine just will just slip around your ling so smoothly. It's, it's ridiculous. Sometimes it really won't sometimes it just gets stuck on everything and sometimes it just slides by but Jadong did a great job making a little wall with his lings and preventing the third marine or the second marine from making its way into the bunker and that just prevents so much damage from actually happening uh two marines in the bunker is so much harder to deal with you saw he lost like one maybe two lings to kill the bunker uh just a moment ago but if there's two marines in there it becomes exponentially worse because the links die faster, the more of them die, and then the DPS from the links goes down. So the bunker takes longer to kill. Uh, you know, the SCV can pop out. It'll try to repair. They might pop back in again. Just things get really messy. You might lose a lot of links. So blocking that second Marine, just perfectly done. Not flinching when it comes to kind of unorthodox bunker cheese there from Sock. Now, one fire bat. This is five marine move out, six marine move out, one medic. Kind of a scary move. You know, you definitely can block this with sunkins, but you don't really want to build sunkins here. He's threatening it, trying to keep it back at home for as long as possible, and four mutas are going to pop out. Now, it's scary. The fire bat here is very scary, but... You know that when your mutas pop out, this force is not going to be that uh, strong. I'm going to try and force these to turn around for a moment. Now, one thing he can do is hit the stim button and run in with the, the fire bats. Try to kill as many drones as he can. He's not going to go for that. Instead, trying to fight with the lings here. Ooh, he gets quite a few of these uh, mutas. And the fire bats are going to go to work here. One pro or one drone kill. He only gets the one. So, not too bad here for Jadong. Just one drone being lost. A second does go down. So, two do fall. How many mutas did we lo lose, though? I think we lost, like, three. Some good damage from Sock. Really, really good damage. Very nice targeting there. And having the fire bats right in front of the Marines with the tight formation 
of Marines there, gunning down the Mutas. Pretty perfectly done. Only one medic in that group, but even that number of Mutas and Lings weren't able to clear, clear that cleanly. I think mostly due to that positioning. Now, one of these Mutas is really, really low. It's so tempting to bring them all together right now because seven Mutas is so much better than six. But it might be better to send that one home and just let it heal up. Because it can go down so damn quick. Extractor here in the top right. He's going to be getting that third gas online relatively soon. No transitionary buildings though just yet here for Jadong. He's going to be producing pure Muta. With a few sprinkled in lings I think. Two marines making their way up towards the top right. I believe I think these have been spotted though. Yeah, there it is. He does spot that. They will clear these out. Not gonna be falling for the same old tricks any longer here. Damn, a lot of damage on this muta as well. Marine almost getting a, a muta kill for himself. Another two marines sliding out on the map. This is really nasty play from Sock. It's pretty dirty, man. He keeps doing this over and over again, and this time it actually might work. The Overlord won't spot this coming in. He's got some lings, though. Okay. He does have some lings. He's seen it all before. He's he's watched this happen a few times now. He knows Sock's MO. He's felt him out. Is he going to be able to counter this? I think he will. Oh! No, 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 no. These lings. Oh. Dude. These lings. Wait. Oh, they're going to get so much damage. These Marines are going to get so much damage. No, dude. Jadong. You had it, man. You had the correct response there. He had the play. But he really messes it up. And he loses the Hydra as well. Oh. Dude. That is so brutal. What's the follow-up here? We've got two Starports. Three Barracks. Two Starports. Coming here from Sock. And we are going to start to snipe off some of the back Marines. But another group of Marines gets split. Sent up towards that fourth base. He does not have Lurker. He's going to be able to make the eggs before the Hydras die at least. But here we go. Muta's diving in here. He actually needs to head north. He needs to head north here. Deal with these Marines. These Marines are going to get so much damage. Bunch of drones going to end up going down here. Okay, one, two, do fall. He brings the Mutas forward, though. Clearing everything out. Just two drones going down. Not the worst thing in the world. I think we might have forgotten about these Mutas. Oh, that's painful. Oh, that is just super painful. He's going to lose that Overlord. Dude, these two Mutas, really? Ah, that really... <laughs> Guys, that really does suck. This type of thing has happened to me before. For sure. It is super, super bad. Um, Lurker's going to get up here on this high ground. To be able to kill off a lot of these Marines that are on the retreat. Mutas hitting here, but dude, if we had two more Mutas in this group, think about how much more damage could have been done here. These two Mutas are absolutely wrecking us right now. If only we had all of our army together. He's even making Greater Spire. He's making Greater Spire. These Mutas are more important than ever with this play right now. He's making Lurker and Greater Spire and Defiler Mound. Well, Jadon's trying to play every everything at the same time. Holy. Really not holding anything back this game. Radiate's going to be coming out here. No Valkyrie play. We're at 11 minutes and we don't have those Guardians yet. I don't think it's some sort of Guardian attack. Doesn't really make sense. It's way too late. You want to be hitting at like 9 minutes. 9 minute Guardian attack is, is kind of where it's at. But he's got one Lurker up here. I don't see a Nidus. Did we forget about Nidus? Creep Colony coming down. Lurkers making their way up to the top right here. Um, 
Are we going to split our lurkers or are we going to stack them? Looks like we're going to stack them. There we go. Getting the stack ready. Okay. Guardians are just going to be harassing the natural. It's not a bad play. It's not a bad play. This is really going to ta tax Sock in this game. He is going to be handling a lot of different things at the same time. I can't believe these two mutas are still here right now. Okay. He's going to run forward. Targeting down one of the lurkers, but the dark storm comes down and he gets the vessel huge huge Pretty bad targeting I would say from sock there didn't get either of the lurkers and Now we've got guardians here hitting the gas geyser It's like we should have some irradiates come out But scourge are ready gonna make it hard on these vessels to actually get the irradiate down. Two irradiates come out. Best he can do right now. Let's start to hit these SCVs and the Marines are making their way back home, but this is taking up so much attention from Sock. That's really the key right now. Big load up of drop ships here. He's clearing out the overlords on the map. I love it. Walking around just scanning and killing overlords. It seems very simple, but it's incredibly effective. Now the drop is going to come into the main and a round of drones just popped. Dude, Sock is going to get so much damage here right now. This drop into the main is brutal. A few lurkers going to make their way over here. Dark Swarm is ready. Plague is almost done, but can he save the Evo Chambers and the uh, Defiler Mound? It's like the Evo Chamber going to be targeted, but it's the wrong Evo. He really wants to get this one. Can it finish in time? Oh my god. Yes, it does finish. That would have been super, super painful. But he does manage to get the upgrade finished. The Filer Man will go down. But I think we can save the Hive here. The Defiler Man is not too expensive a building. It's like 100 gas. Um, Greater Spire could end up falling. That in itself is really, really bad. Oh, we finally found our mutas. Look at that. We found our mutas, but it's a little bit too late to save the base in the top right. Luckily, that's uh, been canceled. And we can bring some more units through here. Where's that Nidus? Dude, are we not playing no Nidus? What, what are we doing? Like some sort of challenge or something? No Nidus challenge? What the heck is going on here right now? It's like finally going to clear up these uh, Marines and Medics in the back of the base. That's good. But I think we can run through here with our Marines. No, he doesn't have any Medics with this, so that would be a little bit silly. Got to break this. Even just a few Lings could kill everything. Scourge are going to get picked off. Defiler, not going to be able to do anything here. He does need to consume, and he has a uh, Plague. So if he can throw down a good Plague here, it would be worth. There we go. Tries to get all three, but not quite able to get it. Ultra Cavern is down. And we're evolving. But no fourth base and still no Nidus? I'm scratching my head right now, guys. I am so confused. How are we not going for a Nidus? Is this like no Nidus November or what's going on here? I'm really, um, really shocked. It's not an expensive building. It's like 150 minerals. Uh, not even any gas. We've got a thousand minerals in the bank right now. Okay, gets it. Nice, nice drop. Nice, uh, shutdown on the drop there. Really, really good shutdown. That's going to really slow down the tempo advantage that Sock had. Sock was hoping to to push that to a win there, but now it seems like we will be able to slow things down enough that we can re-drone, maybe eventually get over here and take this fourth base. It's a lot slower than it should have been, but the drop, that first drop into the main was torturous. It did so much damage. I'm gonna lose one science vessel, but getting a lot of value out of these irradiates. 
Time to put down a spore colony here, actually. I think. Spore colony here would be super helpful. A lot of these are irradiated. One more big plague. Ooh, beautiful plague there. Really fantastic plague. Getting a lot of damage. Imagine if there was a spore here. Can't do this. Oh wait, he could have. Th that vessel still had HP on it. Another drop coming into the main. Oh my God, he's gonna continue with these drops. That is crazy to me. Dark Swarm should come down. Where is that Dark Swarm? He doesn't have energy. Oh no, not a, not a consuming before coming forward here. And he could just target down the Defiler now. Trying to bring everything back into the main, but Jadong is starting to fall apart. He's losing all of his drones here. Pulling the Lurkers, pulling the boys. All the drones are in the uh, natural, but here comes this Marine attack. There's the Nidus. But it was indeed too much. GG is called. Jadong taps out as his entire drone line gets massacred. Wow, look at all that blood. Absolutely pwned here by the drops. That was um That was a crazy game, guys. The lurk or the, the guardian play here over the natural. It's supposed to <laughs> tax the multitasking of the Terran player to the absolute max, to where you can just kind of sit back at home uh, while they're trying to deal with it and, you know, get into all of your upgrades and all that. But right as all of that was happening, Sock saying, well, my, you know, my multitasking is not that taxed. So I'm just going to go for a drop here. We'll do a few other things. We'll get a radiates off. We'll drop. We'll see how your multitasking can handle. Uh, fighting on several different fronts at the same time and Jadon kind of crumbles here, man. He was hanging on pretty well even after that drop, but You could see that he was really taxed uh, Not having that Nidus up for a long time never really able to clear out this top right and get control of that base now we still have one more game here guys and so far these two have been neck and neck back and forth uh, punch for punch Blow for blow. But who is going to come out on top in the final game? We're about to find out. Our final game of the night here. Big shout out to Neon Marble Rust for sponsoring this video. It's been a lot of fun. And we're back again on Citadel, which has produced the best game so far, I would say. We've had some of the best games of this series here on Citadel. Looking forward to another great one. Sock, absolute wild man, throwing in drops like, <laughs> like he's handing them out at Christmas. This man is Santa Claus of drops. He's the, the Santa Claus of the dropship play, the lotto ship play. Really the, um, the Oprah Winfrey of the lotto ship, and you get a dropship, and you get a dropship. Everybody gets a dropship. Top right, bottom right. Even after getting shut down completely. All right. He got crushed in that one drop in the last game. Setting in two dropships at the same time. They both got smashed. Only two Marines made it out. He's like, well, I guess that means there's no Scourge left. <laughs> Let's go again. <laughs> it just sends him in. He gets the, gets the kill with that. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but really, if Jadong had held on one more time, if he had just stopped one more drop, he definitely could have come back in that game. And look at this. He's going for a 12 hatch once again. No longer afraid, no longer afeared of the 8 Rex play from Sock. And Sock, not going to go for that. He's shown in all his, pretty much all, was it all of his games on Citadel? I don't think he went for 8 Rex even once on this map. He does marine pressure, but he doesn't eight racks on Citadel, it seems. And the drone gonna make its way in here. Does see the wall. So I'm gonna start that second supply depot. There's just a small gap here at the top. Nothing, uh, nothing a single SCV can't fill. And spawning pool here on the way, of course. Gas coming up as well. Nothing too out of the ordinary right now, but I'll keep my eyes sharp here. 
See if I can't spot anything wild coming. Now, Academy has started. I believe this is going to be for the two racks Academy rush. And we should see a five minute push out here from Sock. Keeping his Marines out in the front. I can't believe he's still doing this. I mean, this it seems like just the standard play now that Terran players will do this all the time. They just keep their Marines way out here. He has the SCV in. In the main. Um, and sees the Lings. But I'm just I'm shocked that players still want to sit like this. Four Marines coming forward against four Lings. Can he trade? Not going to be able to. More Lings are being produced. I really hope he goes home now. Are we going to make more links? No. Link speed drones are on the way here. Six links are available to just five marines. Can he actually dump, jump on top of this? One fire bat's being made. One medic has popped out, but it's back at home. He's not brought it together. Oh my gosh. Can he actually take this fight? Oh, pretty good control. Very good control, actually. Sock takes that fight. Oh, one Marine goes down, two Marines go down. Really nice play there from Jadong, waiting right at the tip top of this little ridge line here. And again, he does it again. Oh, I just caught the end of that, but he got three Marines with that play. And now the sunken colonies, are they gonna finish in time? Well, there's only two Marines here and one sunken is done. Was he attacking that with the SCV or something? That's kind of hilarious. It's actually kind of low. <laughs> he lost 200 or it lost 100 HP. Um, to a what? To a SCV? That's kind of crazy. Ling here in the main gets a kill on an SCV. Maybe another one gonna go down? No, he does clear that out. And you're happy to build two sunken colonies here, actually. Um, oh, this is too. <laughs> I didn't even notice this. What am I crazy? Two barracks. I took. <laughs> Caster's curse here. I said I was going to keep my eyes sharp. But then I didn't even see that this was two barracks. He ran by this with the Ling, so he 100% knows. I think Sock is just kind of screwed right now. Mutas are going to come out. I, if I'm Jadong right now, I build a third sunken colony. For sure. Maybe even a fourth one. Because this is just... This is so all in. This is so crazy all in right now. We don't even have an eBay. There it is right now. eBay is going to be on the way. Dude. Jadong shut this down so beautifully, so brilliantly. With just lings on high ground. That's all he needed was just a few lings on high ground. And a couple of well-timed sunken colonies. And now he's going to get his mutilus playoff. And there's just nothing here for Sock. He's going to... Run back into the main, and he's going to start a starport, but he just taps out. Oh, man. Let's go back and watch that one more time. Let's just see the beauty of what Jadong was able to pull off here. I didn't even notice this, guys. I apologize. I bet some of you were yelling at me for not um, watching the production tab and seeing that there's a... Uh, barracks coming now. Why did he build the barracks right here? Well, it's because when the barracks starts it kind of looks like a CC And I guess this is the real reason why he was standing out here so far in front is to try and zone lings so that he could um, Kind of hide what he was doing here So comes forward with the links. This is actually brilliant what uh, sock does right here he doesn't even lose a single Marine. He gets two kills on some links, but watch this. Right here, Jadong pulling all the links together. And right as the vision changes, let's take a look. Boom. Right as the vision changes, the links are all three of them hitting at the same time. I believe it only takes like two hits for three links to kill a Marine. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, it's pretty close. Just about. Three lings take two hits. I guess it's um it's three hits. But there's a little extra damage. And he gets two marines right off the bat. And then watch this. And again. After killing off two marines. 
of this push, he gets another one. And that just shuts this push down so hard. It really takes the wind out of the sails here for Sock. He's slowed down. He's lost Marines. He can't break Sunken Colonies. If he had uh, three more Marines here, he might have tried for it. The Fire Bats can do a lot of tanking. They take a lot of uh, hits from the uh, Sunken Colonies to actually kill them. He might have actually gone for it. And then the Ling runs by and he sees that. Really, really well played by Jadong. Just the small maneuvers in the early game. Uh, able to shut this kind of cheesy play down. I'm surprised to see Sock do something like this, but it has been a long series. I'm sure he's tired. I'm sure you guys must be tired as well of listening to me talk, but that's it for today. Your daily dose of Brood War, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.